very good morning to you and uh, you're welcome to this morning's signpost webinar. Uh, my name is Mark Gibson and today uh, we'll be talking about hedgerows. And just to remind you that the signpost series is brought to you by Chagas Connected in association with Dairy Sustainability Ireland, the National Rural Network and Food Drink Ireland Skillnet. So uh, I hope you've all had the opportunity to enjoy the fine weather and the beautiful Irish countryside during the, the holiday season. Um, but today, as I said, we're going to be talking about hedgerows and uh, the launch of Hedgerow Week. As we know, hedgerows are hugely important wildlife corridors in Ireland and they connect isolated woodlands and help mammals, insects, birds and bats uh, get uh, from one part of the countryside to another. And there are many, many more uh, benefits of hedgerows. Uh, so I'm delighted uh, this morning to be joined by Minister uh, Pippet Hackett, who's uh, Minister of State at the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Uh, we also have Francis Quigley, who's a machinery specialist and co-organizer of uh, Hedgerow Week. And um, our main speaker to this morning is Dr. Catherine Keena, who is a countryside management specialist with Chagask. And good morning, everybody. You're very welcome morning, to this morning's Mark. webinar. Good morning, Mark. So, uh, Minister, you're very welcome to the, the webinar once again, and uh, you've very kindly agreed to officially launch uh, Hedgerow Week for us in 2022. How are you today? Very well, thanks, Mark. Uh, great to be here. And uh, yeah, I think, I think you know, on the whole, people are enjoying the fine weather. I know some of us could do it, maybe some rain, but yes, I'm sure it'll yes. come. <laughs> it is, it is an issue, all right, in parts of the country, all right. Um, but uh, look, we can't be complaining too much. Um, so, Minister, I, I'll, I'll hand over to you for, for the official opening and um, we will uh, talk, talk to you in a moment. Thank you very much, Mark. And yeah, look, it is a pleasure to be here um, at the start of Hedgerow Week. Um, in fact, yesterday I was out with my 11-year-old uh, son. We were picking some blackberries in, in a hedge of one of our own. And it was just nice, you know, it's lovely to be able to do that and to see the fruits up close. And of course, they taste really nice, too. So, uh, yeah, I, I, an apt time, obviously, for, for Hedgerow Week. And um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to launch Chagas's Hedgerow Week. And I think at last year's event and, and in previous years, we've seen a really packed schedule. And again, this will be no exception. And we have, um, I think there's some standouts this week. Well, there are going to be exhibits on hedgerows um, this coming week um, at the uh, uh, Iverk Show in Pilltown at the Johnstown Castle Open Day um, and demonstrations at Gurchin College. And certainly the novel idea of a walk and talk in association with Noor Vision and the Heritage Council on hedgerows of Kilkenny City should also prove very interesting. So I urge everyone to check out the events and, and, and get to as many as you can this week. Um, it's certainly with thanks to events like Hedgerow Week that um, progress has been made on raising awareness of the value of our hedges and the, the importance of the appropriate ma maintenance. <clears throat> and, and I know why we, we do see all this sort of, uh, particularly on, on social media, you know, bad examples of, of hedgerow management. There's also a lot of good out there. And I, for one, could, can speak to having traveled around the country this last year or so. I think of existing hedges, I think they're looking bigger. I think they're looking taller. You can even see in the spring where maybe farmers have left a little bit more six or eight inches on the previous year's growth. So I think that's all progress. I think it, the, the, the importance of hedges is filtering through. And um, I think that's really, really positive. And we can just keep building on that. And thanks to everyone who, who engages with that. We're fortunate in Ireland to have quite a lot of hedges. I and mean, we have lost some over the years but you know we're, compared to other countries we're not too bad we've an estimated hedgerow length about 700,000 kilometers um, and hedges are estimated to cover about four percent of the Irish landscape um, so that's you know quite significant um, but still there, there there's more we can do and certainly more you're going to hear from Catherine in terms of and Francis in terms of hedgerow management later on and the best practices to involve Obviously, we know that hedges perform um, multiple functions, um, not only as, as boundaries and, and as stock proof fencing, they are corridors for wildlife. Um, they are uh, places for wildlife to, to, to breed, to, to live, to, for birds to nest, and certainly for wildlife 
uh, um, to, to access food, uh, particularly from this time of the year onwards. Uh, so those flowers we saw in the spring will have turned into some sort of fruit or berry now. Um, and I actually walked by a hedge, not it was my own land, actually a neighbor's farm yesterday. And here was a, a crab apple tree with uh, crab apples, you know, almost ripe alongside uh, sloes, which obviously are the berries of the, of the blackthorn. So just hand in hand and a little piece like that you could see how managing our hedges and, and maybe leaving some of the some of the trees and plants and shrubs to, to flower and fruit is invaluable. Um, we also, I suppose, are, are trying to further understand the carbon content um, of, of our hedges. And I know work is undergo undergoing between the EPA and Chagas in that regard. But projects such as Farm Carbon um, are continuing to ensure that we increase awareness, you know, through that, through, through, through carbon and through sharing of knowledge around, around what our hedges are, are good for. Um, so I think also in Ireland, we're very fortunate to have the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan in place since 2015. Um, and the first plan actually produced guidelines for, for farmland, actions to help pollinators. Again, this is a hugely valuable source of information and, and anyone on here who's interested, do just check it out. A lot of the advice is, is relatively simple, straightforward to adopt, but you know, sometimes we just need to, to nudge that information in, in the right direction. Um, my, my own department of agriculture supports a farmland pollinator officer. Um, who is working to further engage with farmers and look, the many benefits of hedgerows, such as providing food and shelter, are really only possible. And I suppose this is one of the bottom lines are only possible if the hedge has been maintained in an appropriate manner um, over a number of years, of course, and allowed to bloom and fruit during the year. This, this importance of hedgerows as a, as a farmland habitat, habitat has been recognized you know, through environmental schemes since 1994, when the first REP scheme was, was devised. And since then, we've tried to advance and, and build on those through, through, through the different REP uh, schemes, through AEOS and through the, the outgoing GLOSS scheme. Um, and these schemes have facilitated the planting of about 11,000 uh, kilometers of new hedges and the rejuvenation of about 6,000. Um, you know, that is significant, but in a, in a 700,000 kilometre length of hedge um, across the country, you know, there is certainly more scope to, to do more. And certainly I'd like to think under the new agri-environmental scheme um, acres, um, we will be able to continue and build on those achievements. And certainly hedges and, and trees feature, I think, to a great extent in the, in the acres um, measures. And I, ho I hope farmers will avail of those and undertake those. Um, so Hedgerow Week was really about best practice hedge cutting um, and again we'll build on progress we've already achieved. Um, so really I suppose look the 1st of September is, is the date at which hedges can be cut but I suppose rather than just starting straight away on the 1st of September I would encourage where possible that farmers cut their hedges as late as possible um, in the winter you know certainly if there's berries on your hedges um, to allow birds to avail of those um, much needed food sources um, later on this autumn and, and throughout the winter. Look, I accept in certain circumstances this isn't going to be possible, but maybe um, maybe more sympathetic cutting or maybe leaving um, a few more parts of hedges on uncut might might facilitate that also. But ultimately, we're, we're, we see our hedges now as, as not just those boundaries and stock proof pieces, but as those essential habitats. And we know our, our, our numbers of, of wildlife are in decline or some bird species, um, insects, everything really that could rely on a hedge is challenged when we remove those vital fruits. So I think, you know, actions like these and, and how we manage our hedges can have a significant positive impact on our biodiversity. Obviously, farm safety is a huge, important issue in relation to um, utilizing hedge cutting equipment. Um, and, and farmers should always use a, a well-trained operator with, oper with appropriately maintained equipment to, to uh, carry out hedge, hedgerow maintenance. So before I finish, I would like to mention that there are a number of resources available to, to guide hedgerow management. In recent years, certainly Chagas have produced some very good material around hedgerow management. Um, and also the Farming for Nature initiative um, have produced a best practice guideline around hedges and hedgerow road, road management. 
Um, and there are other publications indeed uh, through the Irish or the Ireland's pollinator plan. So, you know, reach out, have a look at those and maybe try and adopt some of the advice. So finally, to conclude, we prepare for and reflect on our approach to hedgerow man maintenance over the coming season. Um, remember that it is through best practice hedge cutting that our hedgerows can flourish and our appreciation for hedgerows will continue. So um, I hope you enjoy it this morning's uh, seminar um, and I'm going to pass you back to Mark and I'm sure you will very much enjoy what Francis and Catherine have to say as well so thank you very much. Thank you very much Minister and, and I think it really underlines the importance of hedgerows the fact that we have a minister here this morning talking about uh, hedgerow week and the, the importance and uh, uh, you, you have a great knowledge of, of hedgerows yourself you're, you're farming uh, I know in, in uh, County Offaly if I'm not mistaken and yeah. uh, so mm -hmm. it, it is uh, it is a really important part of our countryside and uh, my goodness I'm looking at uh, Francis's and uh, Catherine's backgrounds there we, uh, can you imagine that landscape without uh, hedgerows um, you know it, it is such an important uh, part of our culture as well um, so so Minister thank you again for coming along this morning and we appreciate your support for all of the initiatives that we're running and uh, we will I'm sure have you uh, or see you again here on the the, the, the signpost webinar in, in, in not, not too uh, distant future hopefully. Indeed my pleasure thank you very much Mark. Thank okay. you bye-bye. So um, we're going to move uh, swiftly onwards now to our, our main presentation this morning. Uh, so Catherine, you're going to be talking to us about the different types of hedgerows, um, the acres hedge actions, and also uh, uh, giving us an outline of uh, what's, what's coming up next week uh, for Hedgerow Week. Um, so are you, can you share your screen with us yeah. there, Catherine? Um, so uh, really packed lineup for, for next week. So I know Fra Francis is going to talk to us more about that at the end of your presentation. Um, so Catherine, please, yeah. the floor is yours. If people want to send two questions, just a reminder to use the Q&A tab at the, at the bottom of your screen. And please do send us your questions. Uh, this is what these events are about, is uh, uh, having, having your, uh, giving your, you the opportunity to put questions to the experts. So please do any questions or comments that you might have uh, include them in the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen. So Catherine, uh, thanks very much again, and uh, we'll hand straight over to you. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, I've been talking about hedges for a long time, so I'm going to give some simple messages today. Hopefully everyone will take away uh, three simple messages. Best practice management for our two hedge types. So the title gives the hint to what I'm going to talk about. Two types of hedges. If we could, if we could clarify that, it would help a lot, I think, to move forward. Uh, mention some of the acres hedge actions, which advisors and farmers are, are now mulling over and will be dealing with in early autumn and the hedgerow week events. So I'm taking a leaf out of Owen Carton uh, from the Cumber Uplands Communities, our ex-colleagues book in giving you the three messages at the beginning rather than the end um, or as well as the end. So the three things I would love if you went away with today is to know the two types of hedges and their specific but very different management. And in summary, it's don't top escaped hedges and don't let topped hedges escape. So I'll come on to that. When planting hedges, which a lot of people will be doing in acres, decide which type you want before you start. So we're back to the two types of hedges. And another acres action is coppicing. And um, it can be very good or very bad. And my plea today is to coppice upside down tallish brush hedges rather than escaped hedges. So back to our two hedge types. Um, this picture has both of them. Um, if you can see the one now it runs right along the back is what I call the escaped hedge and I, the one running at, at perpendicular to it is the topped hedge, although it is maybe it, you can see the other one in the background. So two totally different animals in my view. The escaped hedge has never been topped. Some people call it a tree line, a linear woodland. I suppose this brings me to the history of our hedges. So apart from the townland boundaries, which were planted maybe 2000 years ago, most of the Irish hedges were planted only 200 years ago under, under law. That, um, and it was really a management tool to so that cattle could be kept in or out of in fields, out of crops, 
Um, it allowed management. It was the beginning of the productive agriculture. So and it was before wire. So it was extremely important to have hedges to manage them. So the hedges were planted and the escaped hedges over the 200 years have never been topped. That's what I am talking about here. Um, that's the escaped hedge never been topped. There are tree lines, as I said, so that's that's them. Uh, come in various different shapes and sizes. I could show you 20 pictures of different hedges. But as I said, these all, what they have in common is you can see there, um, these hedges over, over the 200 years have never been topped. And their huge biodiversity value is primarily in the canopy. Um, you can see there the, the, the amount of flowers, they flower freely, they fruit freely, um, you have the willows and, and the, the hazels, you know, right through the year, it's a larder for uh, bees, all the invertebrates um, and the birds. And some of the birds, I've given examples at the bottom, actually nest up in the trees. So this, this is all about the canopy, primarily in the canopy. You can see from the previous picture, some of the uh, at the base, they, you know, they have grown into trees as a white thorn, which is our predominant hedge species, no more than an oak tree wants to do. Its whole aim in life is to become a tree. And that's what the escaped hedges are. They've escaped management. They've escaped topping. Um, now, the best practice management, again, is to continue never to top them. Side trimming is always OK. Um, you know, it, it, you can, it, we don't want them, they would creep out and out into the field. And uh, while a wide hedge is good, we don't necessarily want that, we still want the field. So uh, side trimming, but never ever to top. The second type of hedge then is the topped hedge. And this is where deliberately uh, the apical dominance has been managed. And the apical dominance is, as I said, where you plant a white thorn uh, whip or an oak tree, and its whole purpose in life is to grow up into being a tree with a with a canopy, with a with a, a full canopy and a single stem, and that's what those tree two um, thorn trees in that hedge have done. But the remainder of those from day one have been have been pruned and layered up. So that that is so dense. I know the stakes in it there, but the wire has been taken down off that wire, off that hedge. And uh, I just say it, not a bull would go through it. It's cows in that field. And um, so for years that has been layered up, and it's it's uh, really important then that that is kept topped, and um, because otherwise it will escape. And for the value in this hedge is in well, it has a bit of both. The huge value is in the dense space. You have um, primarily for, for the nesting birds, cover for small animals. You have the thrush and the blackbird eating the worms and the snails underneath it. But it can still have some of the canopy biodiversity, not as much as the other, um, as the escaped hedge. But it, you can, either, with the occasional trees, um, including thorns, you will have flowers and fruit within that hedge. Uh, topped hedges come in all shapes and sizes, uh, some good, some bad. Uh, when we, we we come on to the best practice management there. So I think you can guess which ones aren't going to score so high um, when we want height and we want um, we want a good a good base in it in order to be able to keep topping it. So the best practice management of these top hedges is to side trim from a wide base to a triangular profile that keeps that allows the light to the base and you have all the hedge growing rather than it being overshadowed by a, at the top. So the base of the hedge is kept healthy and growing. It is important to cut the growing point to prevent escaping. Um, it leave the peak as high as possible. Um, now the, the research has shown that below 1.5 is, is very bad. There are no birds nesting in it because they need cover above and below. Um, so at least 1.5 above the ground level, and that can include the bank. If bank, if you can remember two pictures ago there, there was a little fringe on top of a bank, and that does not qualify as the 1.5 meters. But as high as possible, again, a variety is good on a farm, uh, as high as what the, 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 the limit on the height is whatever the hedge cutter can trim, can, can cut, nip off the apical dominance there, and it should only be nipping the top as a triangular point um, rather than a flat top, and that's, that is a superb hedge that will keep healthy for years. 
And uh, because there's a whole base there, you can see the amount of growth that's supporting that where we're cutting the top, um, as opposed to some of the others we'll show. Retain occasional thorn saplings and allow, mature to, and allow to mature into flowering, flowering and fruiting trees. And my preference is to cut little and often, and I'll explain that better perhaps in the next slide. Um, this is typical if you're looking out on your farm and say, this is what I have, um, and it's nice and neat and tidy, and that would be the, the you know, we have a problem with neat and tidy, um, but there are, this is white thorn hedges, but there are no flowers in this hedge, there will be no fruit in the hedge this autumn, um, and it, it is not good for biodiversity, and it's not good for carbon. Uh, because for carbon, again, the results coming out from Lillian's work shows, you know, the bigger and denser, the better. So no be no flowers, no fruit, um, not, not good. OK, so our, the overall plan, my vision for every farm is to have both types of hedges. And I think perhaps we have I haven't talked enough about the escaped hedges in the past because we're we're so concentrated on trying to get the the man the cutting of the others right um but they do face a threat they face a threat of being removed because they're seen as not, not useless from a stock proof point of view they also face the biggest threat they face um when farmers take over a farm is that they are cut at at kind of a, a two three four or five foot high and that then turns them into the upside down toilet brush hedge. But so the overall plan is as long as you have some escaped hedges on the farm, you follow best practice management for both the topped and escaped, which means that you have some flowering and fruiting trees in the other hedges. And then that keeps, we have both types. The, the elephant in the room can be the quantity. Uh, there's not much point in talking about quality and hedgerow management if you have um, 100 acre fields that have no hedges. So we must keep remembering the quantity there and the back of the envelope that I find useful and I think advisors do is literally uh, the total size of the farming platform divided by the number of fields. And I'm talking about fields surrounded by biodiverse boundaries and to work on improving that over time, but you know, at least under five hectares. OK, so moving on to um, the acres actions and where they fit in with uh, with the hedges. So we have three coppicing, laying and planting. So this follows on then okay, coppicing first, just to, to run through the facts, uh, the minimum of 10 metres maximum this time around of only 400 metres. I think that reflects the concern about um, the quality of the work done. So we really need to get this right this time. Uh, there's a nice payment for it to 87 per meter per year for five years. Um, so a lot of people will take this up. So it's critical that appropriate hedges are chosen. Um, and this is what today is about. Uh, my biggest problem is it is very difficult to see the hedge structure until the winter. The only time I would look at hedges for coppicing would be December, January, you know, when there's no leaves there everything looks good at the moment and that is a concern because sometimes I know an awful lot of the top hedges are um, stumps with fringes on them and they're not going to support uh, growth but they, they they put on a show during the summer and um, and it can be problems I know way back in the past there was problems with, if we put that in something like that in and it was misunderstood somebody thought oh you're just tr trying to get easy money and um, it was questioned. And I think we all need to understand um, these, the, the, that, you know, the, the, there's very, a, a lot of the top hedges could do with being brought back to the ground. Best practice coppicing is critical to improve rather than destroy biodiversity and reduce carbon. Um, and old wire, a really serious warning here, old wire embedded in hedges must be removed before coppicing. So the dangers there, people have been killed. But apart from that, um, it's the amount of work. So be very careful putting in a hedge for coppicing and then realizing, oh my God, that's a huge job before the contractor will, will, touch, will come to touch it. So three examples of which hedge we would cop should we coppice. Um, this one could be done. I think it's far too valuable for biodiversity and carbon to coppice. I would fence off both sides and allow natural regeneration of shrubs and ground flora. Um, 
even where a hedge is is kind of is gappy don't forget there's other biodiversity between that there's carbon in banks and um, so when i see a kind of a broken down hedge i don't always see oh i must do you know do something with it i would far prefer to put my new hedge in a, in a different place and and leave the when we think about it 200 years old their archaeological features they have a, a thread from 200 years ago the less interference with these the better other than to fence off both sides and let then natural you know vegetation will come you wouldn't know what kind of flowers and uh, shrubs will come up okay again this one even worse there's certainly too few shrubs here for successful regeneration too valuable for biodiversity and carbon to coppice in my view I would, again would fence off both sides and allow natural regeneration. Um, it's too big a job. It just is not worth it. Um, okay, so the one I would coppice uh, is one, and uh, this upside down tallish brush hedge, because it is of low biodiversity and carbon value at the moment, it's about to die on its feet. Um, it, because it, if you keep now that one may not look too bad there, but I, I, you saw other examples there where being cut to the same point every year, only supported by a stump is where our hedges are dying out. Um, the thorn shrubs will rejuvenate well when cut because it's thorns. That's the next point. Um, there's no point in coppicing ash or other species. Um, we really are talking about thorn species, black thorn, white thorn, holly. Holly generally doesn't need to, neither does black thorn too much. It tends to grow at the base. We're primarily looking for a white thorn hedge that has enough thorn stems, approximately one ever, every meter. So implanting is not necessary because that's a nightmare of a job and is seldom successful in my view. Um, so that's the one I would love to see coppiced. There's plenty of them out there, whether we can see them before the winter. Um, but, we, you know, I think you get the idea. So uh, Catherine, even, even with the wider than a meter gap there, um, you're still saying that probably implanting isn't going to be that successful? It's very, very difficult. You're going into a dry soil, you're into white thorn, thorn sickness, you know, this like apple sickness where uh, where the old tree doesn't want the new one to grow. Mm. This, I don't know where the science is on that, but certainly from a drought and from even keeping weeds down, there is no comparison to putting a whip in there compared to what we're going to show in, with the new planting, which never fails in my experience. What about the black thorn with that uh... black thorn or holly is better but but my point is i would be there are enough hedges out there which need coppicing which will not need infilling it will be a superb hedge that will not need a, a wire fence because a half hedge is, is worth is no good if you know what i mean yes um but you can do anything i'm given very simple rules mark and it's a good point um but this is an excellent job. You can see here, it was an appropriate hedge that was chosen. Um, you can see the one in the background was similar to that. So there was, and you can see it was cut at ground level, clean sloping cuts, sufficient stems, so no infilling was required. So that is a guaranteed success. That will take off and the weeds won't even cause a problem. And then you 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 layer it up again, then up to whatever. So that's, that's the ones, why not go for, for the, the ones that are going to be a success rather than this is what happened in the past. The worst hedge was picked and kind of going back to what you're saying, Mark, we could put one in there, but everything was wrong here. It was cut too high. There was no infilling done, but I still would say I would not recommend the infilling there um, to grow in such hedges. But in that case, that was probably a, a tall escaped hedge and that was destroyed and we have no result. So that's what I'm warning against. We do not want to see this. It must be cut at ground level, and that is still not a hedge I would have picked for coppicing. Uh, hedge laying, um, I won't say as much about this. It's an absolute beautiful skill. Same, same amount of meters. Um, payment 547 per meter per year for five years. So it's more money, a lot more labor. Critical again that appropriate hedges are chosen. For this now, you need tall hedges. So you are talking about the escaped hedges. But this is a hand, hand job that, you know, in general, people who do this do it very well and, you know, will, will make it work. It's again, it's very difficult to see the hedge structure until winter. So if you, you know, you, you need an expert looking at it. Best practice laying is highly skilled work and, you know, is is fantastic. But the huge concern here is that diggers and heavy machinery 
have been used in the past and that is absolutely not acceptable. So again, just a couple of pictures of the skill there. I won't go into it in detail today. I'll keep moving. Um, but you get the picture. It's it's coppicing, but not going the full way and laying it over. Um, and uh, some amazing skill shown there. And again, the bottom picture was just to show that he was leaving one of those as a thorn tree. I think that's very important. Um, as he, the, he was laying around it, but he was going to leave that as a white thorn tree to stand proud and um, produce the berries. Look, fantastic job, but take, but I would be worried um, about it being done right. And then we are on to the planting. So again, now we've uh, it was fantastic here. Now we've up to 750 meters um, gone up since since last. The only slight concern is 750 meters is a lot. Unfortunately, the way the schemes work, this all has to be done in the one year. It's not ideal, but we have to work with it. Um, but it, it, it's a lot of work to manage. A lot of people plant hedges but without thought of the future. So again, the payment there, 529 per meter per year for five years. Uh, just uh, on the plants, five plants per meter, slightly different than before, double staggered row. At least three species with no one making up more than 70% of the total must be Irish origin or provenance and purchased from registered producers. That's all okay. But again, critical and my plea to everybody is if you're thinking of planting decide whether escaped or topped because it's a totally different hedge and manage accordingly uh, planting a new escaped hedge choose any mix of tree or hedge or tree species because they're not going to ever be topped you don't prune them after planting therefore it's, you don't use the compostable film it's kind of down to hand weeding it's not as critical because they're going to go into a single stem anyway and it's fine as long as they are never topped. Um, the, the big concern with this is a lot of people say to me, no, I, I, I won't bother pruning or plastic or anything like that. And then when it comes to above the wire at you know five foot high, uh, they say, oh yeah, I'll cut it then, not realizing they're already destroying, turning it into an upside down childhood first edge. It will take a while to, to come to, 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 to a doomsday, but it's really, really wrong for our new hedges. If it's an escaped hedge, lovely. You know I love those. But as long as you're never going to top it. If you're going to, if you want a topped hedge, and in general, people who plant hedges tend to want this one, um, you must choose hedgerow species that tolerate trimming. You must plan for an occasional white thorn tree um, as, uh, and, in, and include a small number of additional tree species. But I always put the thorn first because people always tend to, you know, back in the day with the, with you, they would have left the ash. Um, but nobody has been thinking of the white thorn as a tree. And, you know, we're moving on this now with the derogation rules has done fantastic work. Um, protect these trees uh, with a tree guard. The, these are the single individual trees and partly so they, so they will never be pruned because the hedge will kind of catch up and you might get you it's difficult to see where they are the next year um it also keeps them uh, uh, you know it, it just protects them and it's a really good marker so those trees then are left forever i would tend to put one every 10 meters in a new hedge to give you an option um you know you can always cut it out but it's nice to have it straight from the beginning um in in the derogation and in all tapped hedges, we would love to see existing thorns being left grow up. Go back to that picture, that very sparse picture I saw. Within a year, that could be improved by leaving a clump of thorns grow up. Um, and, and the reason when I ask people, you know, advisors or farmers, they often say, sure, there was no thorn. There was no tree in the hedge, not realizing the whole hedge was white thorn. But because it has never flowered, they don't realize that's what it is. OK, the rest of the, the hedge then, other than our individual specimen trees, which is a white thorn and others, uh, we prune all the plants other than those after planting, push compostable film um, or plastic we've used in the past, but now we're moving on to compostable film over the pruned stumps and prune each year to get layered growth. Again, somebody said that to me lately and I thought it was a lovely explanation. I used to talk about inching it up, but this is an example of, of you know, that's that's on its second cut there. The more you cut, the fantastic thing about white thorn is that it thrives on cutting, but only out a bit every year, okay? And that's the compostable filling, film working perfectly. Um, again, this is our demo of, of such a such a uh, and we're doing this. We did about 10 
examples on Chagas Farms this year, and where the plan is to do an adjoining 10 metres each year, because seeing is believing, and it's only when you see that result the year afterwards, you know, because that's kind of frightening to people to do that. They have to take me for granted, but once they've seen the result, they will never forget it. So again, that picture there now on the bottom left, that's going to be cut back like the one on the top right. So every time, wherever you cut, it will multiply. Okay. And uh, again, so in some way, you one, know. There's yeah. just one question there, just when we're talking about the film. Uh, yes. What about using sheep's wool as a weed barrier when planting a new hedge rather than using plastic? or Good other question, Francis. Anything that keeps the light out. So uh, people can use cardboard or carpet or whatever, you know, mulch. Um, but in my experience, there is none of those are available to every farm in the country but anything that keeps the light out and provided it's kept out all the time if you know what I mean because sometimes people throw down a bit of, of bark mulch or whatever but unless you keep it layered up um or sawdust you know so but anything that keeps the light out that's all we're doing um and but the only one I've ever found to work on every situation is the plastic now com combustible film so just to summarize then, um, with all this fantastic work and hopefully um, education uh, on, on the, the benefits of the hedges for biodiversity and carbon and water and shelter and um, all the different flora and fauna, but only if we have a hedgerow plan on our farm. And again, we need both types of hedges on every farm. You can see clearly there, the one on the left is the escaped hedge, possibly with a gappy, a thin base. Um, but the one on the right then has the chopped hedge containing individual thorn or, or crab apple or whatever other trees. Um, and again, just to summarize, we're going to Chagas Hedgerow Week and, to, and our main message is our, um, uh, you know, our, our the best practice. So I just run through the dates. Uh, Saturday tomorrow in Iberk Show in Kilkenny, we'll have a hedgerow stand. Uh, Monday, we, we will be announcing the winner of uh, a new farm hedge competition with a role of compostable film sponsored by Mays Tech. Our Johnstown Castle Open Day will have a, a big hedgerow exhibit both on the table and in reality. Uh, the talk in the Norvision and in association with the Heritage Council, walk and talk for the hedgerows of Kilkenny City. So we're not leaving the, the city, the country and city, we're covering all. Um, Thursday the 1st at 11 o'clock in Gurchin Agricultural College, demonstrations there. And uh, next Friday, actually quite exciting for, for me, uh, because it, I, I, there is not much of an international dimension because we've, we're so much on our own here with the hedges, but there is some, some work going on in France and we'll have a, an international dimension there. So again, the whole purpose of the week is to for you to go away knowing recognizing the, the two types of hedges and their specific management. Don't top escaped hedges and don't let top hedges escape. When planting, decide which type you want before you start and coppice upside down toilet brush hedges rather than escaped. Garmagi. Thanks very much, Catherine. Um, excellent uh, run through. Again, I know it was difficult to, to go into any specific detail on the, the actual planting side of things, but really good advice there on the, the management side of things. And looking forward to next week's presentation from uh, Francoise Borel from, from France, uh, who's going to be speaking about the, the network element of, of, of hedgerows. Uh, Catherine, just a question for you there in relation to the, the wilder hedges. I know there's a, a, a view out there that uh, by some farmers that uh, hedgerows should be just left to their own devices and not interfered with. What's, what's your view on that? Yeah, I think, and that hasn't helped us. This is where the confusion arises. For the escaped hedges, that's fine. You know, if you side trim, that's fine. Or if you don't side trim, that's fine. But the other, for the other hedge, it's the wrong, wrong thing to say. And I think it's uh, providing we have some escaped hedges and we manage our, our so it, yeah, that has caused us huge problems and huge problems for contractors, Mark, that, mm -hmm. you know, that it's kind of, oh, we should not touch anything. No, that's not right. That is not right. We need a balance of, of all types and the right management. But th that does not excuse poor management. Okay. Poor hedge cutting. I was looking at some of the images you had there of the escaped hedges, uh, the mature escaped hedges. I was just thinking, would that grassland man, uh, margin option in acres be suitable for though? That it would be ideal, wouldn't it? Oh, Mark, I well, I I foresee um, a time when there'll be a margin around every every hedge and every watercourse. 
um, and yeah. because it's another habitat that's missing off farms that's another story in its own right but absolutely the margin along by that would be super and that's another fantastic option and well-paying option in acres yeah you mentioned about the uh, requirement under acres to have your hedges planted in the first year is that correct am i correct in that and that's um, maybe it... not i think is it maybe not the first year but it all kind of has to happen I think at the end of 2024, I looked at the coppicing. I haven't, I forget now, did I take, take okay. it wrong for the planting? But it's not like you, ideally, you'd love to do a bit every year over the five years, and that certainly isn't allowed. Yeah. No, I was just thinking about the pressure that that might put on Absolutely. the size of, of new stock. And Everything. Yeah. It causes huge problems. Yeah. 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 You mentioned contractors, and, and Francis, I know that uh, you're uh, working on an event for next week specifically designed for contractors. Yeah. Would you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I suppose, you know, one of the key people, you know, when it comes to cutting hedges is the contractor and getting the message uh, through to the contractor uh, is something that we've been working on, I suppose, for a number of years. Um, but it, it is a challenge, you know, um, in a lot of cases, the farmer will assume the contractor knows that the hedge is going to be cut and, and maybe, you know, the contractor assumes that he's doing the right thing too by by trimming tight and, uh, and keeping a nice neat hedge, uh, thinking that's what the farmer wants. And it, it's something we've, I suppose, we've been always trying to encourage them to, uh, I suppose, engage that a little bit more with each other to discuss what it is they actually want and uh, and the results. But I suppose you know the events, uh, the likes of the events in Gortine uh, is critical, and that's where you know we would really be encouraged as many contractors as possible, as well as farmers, to come along to that event. You know, it will be, you know, it is the first of September, so we will be doing a live demonstration there. We will have um the, the machines working there we're going to have um a saw and mulcher hedge um on site for the i suppose for the first time at any of these events you know so we'll be shown uh how to use those and you know like catherine showed in her presentation there you know one of the challenges is that when people use those saw heads they actually tend to maybe use them too high you know um, and not, they're not going low enough um but again as Catherine mentioned already you know that might be for other reasons it might be because there's wire and things uh in the hedge and the contractor is avoiding that so it's it's to get that message and to make sure everybody's clear that it's getting as as, as um that those tools are being used correctly to get the best results so it's on the first it's in Gertin college in ross gray uh it's starting at 11 a.m we'll also be demonstrating a standard hedge cutter joe working on a topped hedge and we'll be emphasizing the importance of leaving that thorn that single thorn um in various points along the hedge and um the other thing that we'll be demonstrating is the actual the use of the compostable film so there is a section of newly planted hedge well it's actually three three years old so even you know even though we're encouraging people to use the comp uh, the compostable film uh when they're planting first day it is actually possible to use it when you go back to do the pruning again so even if you have your hedge in already you know um some people think oh i'm too late now i should have done it first there is an opportunity to to, to use it when you're going back around and so again i'd just like to thank all the staff in gortine um for their help in in hosting and and organizing the event you know and we look forward to as many people as possible coming along on the day to um to i suppose get the message and and um uh, see it in action Right. Thanks. Thanks, Francis. It, it is, I have seen a, a number of farmers experimenting with the, the sheep's wool. Uh, in one way, it is sad to see uh, that sheep's wool is, <laughs> has such a low value uh, that it, it, it is being used for that. But uh, it would be interesting to see the, just how, how people are, are getting on with that. It might be interesting just to even an experiment for ourselves to, mm. to conduct just to see how, how well that, that comes through. Uh, and it's just worth also highlighting uh, the uh, event that's taking place next Tuesday in Johnstown Castle. This is in a major open day uh, for the Environment uh, Research Centre there, Farming for a Better Future. And uh, there's going to be uh, demonstrations around grass clover, uh, multi-species swords, uh, fertilizer and slurry technologies, of course, biodiversity and water quality, um, dairy and dairy beef systems, 
and uh, of course the 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 wider signpost program as well uh, and what's happening there um so and and machinery demonstrations will be also conducted so it's a uh, worth well worth uh, getting along to that event uh, there is a, a registration page for that and you can just go to the chagas website uh, for that uh, francis some really good questions coming through uh, on our q a tab there um if you wouldn't mind going through them for us um I think it'll be it'll yeah. Be, I suppose the sum there just on the escaped hedges, uh, catching um, uh, questions there just around the planting and I suppose the, the reference to any species. Um, there's uh, is there a special mix, Joe? Should the reference to what is traditional to that area or the landscape or the local conditions, soil conditions? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy once it's native species and. Uh, once it's you know what's available the the for the Irish provenance that's really important we touched on it before and I'm very worried about people uh, putting in species that are not um not not uh, not the native species not the native species for example the dog rose you know it's a simple one but rosa canina is the, is the wild one and then there's a rosa rugosa which is very aggressive I'm not quite sure if it's considered um invasive but it's a uh, and, and you know you, it's so easy to get that in a garden center so stick to, be very careful you know there's nothing wrong with a, 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 a you, your whole base is going to be white thorn and black thorn i would expect anyway um but it's just you you have to be very careful not to put too many trees in the in the top hedge the, the escaped hedge there's less pressure you know if you want to throw in your cherries and you know the ones that you don't want to top because they'll never be topped now there was a question, I suppose, just around that again. Is it, you know, in that escaped hedges, you know, will it become too dense if all the seedlings become trees, Joe? You know? um, um, well, that's why I agree. I would keep predominantly thorn. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, just a question, I suppose, back to our membrane and that. Um, can you spray off the ground before planting? Um, and um, will there be demonstrations taking place around the country? Absolutely no need to spray off. It's it's totally irrelevant when you're putting down the, the compostable film. Um, yeah, I'm I've not I've nothing against sprays, but it's just absolutely no need because you're you know you're covering it down and the wider the plastic then a compostable film, you know, you will you will uh, yeah, no need. Uh, ideally, ideally, yeah, turn over the ground. It's just a, a hell of a lot easier. Anybody who's ever done it will always do it. Get a digger, or a mini digger, or a plough, or whatever to turn over the ground. It is probably will grow a bit better, but it's more for the ease of planting. There's a question here about yew hedges. Have they a role in agricultural hedges? You. Mm. You oh, sorry, you and uh, not out in the fields because it's the only one that's poisonous. I mean, mm. they're beautiful yew hedges, you know, in in, a, in in places where there are no animals. Um, but you know, it's just the one you wouldn't put out in the in the field. Uh, it's a history question here for you, Catherine. Oh, um, <laughs> you might help me with that. <laughs> um, the townland markers were planted two thousand years ago. They're just wondering how did that happen? How did um, that happen? I presume it was all to do with marking territory. It definitely was, you know, market territory. Now, what, where the townlands fitted into that, that's, I don't know, but certainly it was territorial, keeping I own this one and you're, you're next door. And that's how much they owned at that stage. So, yeah, and that leads, leads on maybe to, to a question there. Uh, um, uh, Celine in Scotland, there's a lot of their hedges are over trimmed because of peer pressure and what will the neighbour think yeah. issues and good farm and, and how do we tackle this? You know, yeah, uh, well, Francis, that's me and my, your, your quest. It, like the farmer thinks the contractor knows best, the contractor thinks the farmers know best and they're both looking over their shoulder at the, the neighbour and, you know, um, and I... I often tell a story about elderly relatives of my own looking out at, at the at the hedges. I do have to bite my tongue because it's all about how neat and tidy. But this is why it's really important this week and um, that we engage farmers, contractors and the general public, because it's the one habitat on a farm that I work with where, you know, we really do need everybody to understand because everybody has a view, everybody thinks they know, and we just all need to be educated about, about hedges so that we, we, we give positive signals to farmers to do the right thing. And again, yeah. county councils and roadsides, now safety can come into it, um, and safety first always, but sometimes it's not always for safety when things are done. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's a good no, thing. I, even, 
Sorry, go on, the pollinators initiative, I think, has, has been a great help from that perspective where, you know, yeah. the, 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 the mode, what we would typically see is mode margins along the roadsides or yeah. community areas. People are now realizing this is is really uh, sanctuary for for wildlife. And uh, that, OK, it's not neat and tidy. And yeah. uh, the, 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 the human eye is, is probably drawn to 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 those uh, highly manicured gardens. But I mean, there's I think people are now starting to accept that, look, this 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 is something we need to have in our, our around us. There was a line in the original Rex book. Now, I was there at the very beginning of Rex and I'd say it was Frank Mackin that wrote it. And it said the quest for neat, neatness should not override ecological considerations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, had we taken that, heeded that 20 yeah. years ago, um, we would be in a better place. But uh, yes, yeah, so now is the time to understand that. Yeah, yeah. And it was a great principle for, for people to even adopt on their own farms and just to, to see, right, OK, can can we, are there areas that we we, we don't need to have uh, necessarily closely shaved um sorry francis uh lots, lots no more. yeah yeah there is and, and even on that one i suppose the other thing was an awful lot of the brochures for the hedge cutters you oh, know man. when you when you get those they have this lovely picture uh of a nice new tractor and hedge cutter and a really tight trimmed hedge and uh, and an awful lot of the pictures you see online or, or printed in the media are similar and it's something myself and Catherine have been trying to yeah. encourage people to <laughs> <laughs> Francis, you have to work your magic with the machinery. Well, machinery, um, yeah. Ah, look, in fairness, but no, yeah. you're right. The, the short back and sides is is the short back and sides has no fruit or no flowers, and that's the point. And you know, it's uh, a lot of them need to to grow up and also leave the thorns, which I didn't really cover in my presentation, Francis. But you mentioned we're going to ha- show that because it's such a simple thing overnight, and the derogation has done good work. Although I still think people don't quite understand what we mean. We just mean leaving an, an existing clump to grow up a clump because I say it's too hard to narrow down to one, and uh, ca- that can happen later if, if necessary. Um, uh, whereas they, it'll be crooked, but so what? The birds and the bees don't mind. Um, but just an existing clump growing out of the top of that flat topped hedge. Uh, but we don't want flat tops anyway. But again, going back to the point that a lot of it's very hard to talk about the triangular profile when you're talking about an upside down toilet brush hedge or any version of it, because you're beginning with a stump and it's very hard to get that shape until we bring it back to ground level. The, there's a question there about training for our contractors. And I suppose, again, you mentioned how important they are, like Joan is just wondering, is there is there training courses uh, or training program available? Well, the, the, and we did check with Paris Gennery, have uh, offered that um, every year and we would, it, it has fallen into kind of non, non, not, not happening for, but we did, we had a huge effort. Um, we worked with Tom Murphy years ago and we got it together with Tom Ryan. Um, so it it is there. I don't know. Is that what we want, or do we need more days like we're having in Gurchin? Uh, I I'll do anything to help. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 fantastic that contractors and I know they are engaged in Francis through you and they want it because they want to do it right. They're being paid to do. They'll do anything as as they tell me. Um, and yeah. but we all need to be telling them, you know, on the same hymn sheet. And uh, we we'd be hoping to do or, or hoping to encourage more of. The Gortine days, similar days throughout the rest of the season, maybe on some of the signpost farms. And that yes, we're hoping on. to do yeah. during sustainability. I think that first yeah. question you said about demonstrations during sustainability week and in, in October, we'll, we'll hope to re- repeat this in a, in in region within the regions. Different. Yeah, but that, that training, of course, is available if we have the numbers to run it. So it every can, it yeah, can, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Contact yeah. Palace Gallery. Yeah. Um, the uh, is it possible to measure the amount of carbon sequestered by hedges? Um, that is what Lillian O'Sullivan and Farm Carbon is doing, and uh, yeah, she's we're we're awaiting. We'll have her on this on the signpost as soon as she's uh, ready to to give her final kind of results on that. Um, we we know they do sequester, and I think I do, I you know I, I we it, it goes without saying that that the poor hedges I showed you can take it they're not good for carbon um, um i suppose this question here uh, chagas booklet or, or more information i suppose where where uh, the best place to go for um further information I, the website and we have built up a lot of resources now through the the hedgerow week even so on yeah. the chagas website there's yeah, a lot of videos in that there as well yeah, that we keep yeah, up to date yeah. as well yeah yeah 
I just uh, shared some links there for everybody on the chat there that they can log in just, just on the Chagas website for those resources. Um, so those, if you go into the, the, the chat section there, you, you should be able to see them. Um, but no, that's 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 excellent. Um, have we are, we have yeah quite a few questions coming in around the the, the training side of things. So um, that's something that you know we can discuss with contractors uh, during next week's event as well. I know there is a, a desire there by amongst contractors. So um, so perhaps that's something we could roll out through the connected uh, program. Um, so uh, as we, we draw to a close, uh, Catherine and, and Francis, is there anything else you'd like to add in relation to next week's events? No, just to reiterate that the general public and farmers and families, anybody's welcome. You know, uh, as you said, the Johnstown Castle Open Day is going to be um, massive for everybody. Uh, lots of things, but for the, we'll be there at all those. And so all welcome, I suppose, Mark, is what I want to say. Great, great. And um, next week's uh, presentation, uh, again, we'll be following in a similar theme uh, with uh, that, that presentation from Francoise Borel. And uh, Catherine, could you tell us what, what uh, Francoise will be speaking about? Yeah, I heard her speak before, and I suppose it's the first time I ever heard speaking, you know, uh, similar to what I'm saying. And obviously, you know, different. I'm learning from her. So it's just lovely to hear it from another country. And I, you know, I, I think... I think she's hoping to come over at some stage, but and I think we have even far better here, if you know what I mean. But it's fantastic to hear somebody appreciating what they've got. And from my memory, they wouldn't have the quantity or quality that we have. Yes, yes. OK, well, look, we, we will draw to a close there. Thank you, Catherine, uh, for your presentation today. Uh, Francis, thanks for helping out with uh, the questions and, and also your work in organising the events for next week. Uh, and also, I want to thank our minister, uh, Pippa Hackett, for opening today's session for us. Uh, it was great to, to get uh, the, the minister along. As I said, it, it really does under, underline the importance uh, that hedgerows have in the Irish culture and uh, how important it is to to the Irish government as well in terms of the funding side of things as well um, and uh, we will leave it at that so uh, until next week uh, we, we look forward to seeing you next Friday morning do check out those uh, events they're very clearly uh, marked on the Chagas uh, homepage on, on the Chagas website chagas.ie and uh, we, we ask you to take care of yourselves and we will uh, see you next week thanks a lot <laughs>